Hey team, welcome to Control Surfaces Support. By now you have started assigning parameters to your MIDI control surface and you're starting to experience the freedom that comes with an efficient workflow. Undoubtedly, you have met with some hurdles though. And I'm assuming that one of those is perhaps what's called the single fader workflow. And it looks something like this. You assign a parameter, say volume, to a slider or rotary knob and you decide to move on to another track for editing. You then go to make an adjustment to the initial assignment, which is the volume of the first track, and that is when you first discover a big problem. Why is it that when I switch to another track, I can no longer control the assignment on this slider or rotary knob? The answer can be found within the control assignment window. If we go under class where it says channel strip, you will see the term selected track. When these assignments are made inside of the controller assignment window, you find that you can select a specific channel strip type when making your assignments. Selected channel strip or single fader does have some benefits. For one, it is dynamic, meaning it starts to operate once I choose a new track. If I start on track one and move the single fader assignment, the volume slider will work. Same thing if I go to track number five. The volume is going to work here, but what if I did not want to do that? What if I wanted a fixed setting? One that doesn't change dynamically when selecting a new track, but will respond every single time to your command. You want to add parallel compression to a track? Boom. You want to add reverb to a snare when the chorus hits, boom, so on and so forth. Let's learn this in such a way where the assignment that you make is embedded on that controller and does not change no matter what. You ready? So we'll start from the beginning and delete the control parameter assignment. Go back to track number one. We'll click on the volume slider telling Logic this is what we want to learn. Hit Command L. I will go ahead and work with the slider here. Now the assignment has been learned, but this time, instead of choosing selected, go ahead and choose index. And now, as expected, when I use this slider on track one, it sticks. And let's say I go to track five to work on an EQ, it's still going to work on track number one. So this is exciting stuff because now I can have any one of these knobs or sliders control one specific parameter and that's it. It won't be dynamic. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'll assign this first knob to bus number one in a fixed way using index so that it never changes and I will map this controller here so that it's dynamic. So bus one fixed, bus two dynamic. I'll click on bus one, hit command L, learn the assignment. Again, inside of the control parameter assignment window, select index. All right, let's do the same for bus two. Command L, learn the assignment. Automatically logic will choose select a track and we will keep it that way. And so now, I'm on track number one, and as you would expect, I can control bus one and bus two, but as soon as I shift over to track number two, look at what happens. The bus that is inserted on channel strip one is controlled, but the track that's in focus is track two, and because this is a dynamic setup, it will control track two, track three, if I go back to that first bus, it's still controlling the first. Here's track four. And you can see how this works now. So if you're anything like me, you love the information, but you also need to see it in application. You're hands-on, you prefer experiential learning. So let me give you a user case scenario here where index works really well. I'd like to control the balance of the overall vocal with the backup vocals. In order to do that, I'll take channel strip nine, click on the volume slider, and I'll map this to the first slider on my control. Now this needs to be index, 
because I don't want it to be assigned to anything else. In other words, every time I grab this, I need to know without a shadow of a doubt that I'm going to control that parameter. Now you gotta be careful here, because as you can see on my screen, I'm controlling track number one. So if you'd like this to control track number nine, you have to go here, delete that, and then now, track nine is ready to go. So I'm controlling track number nine, and with this, I'll be controlling the overall dry wet level of my reverb. So let me control that now. And that's going to be on track 14, so Command L. All right, the assignment has been made. Let me go ahead and reassign as I don't want various parameters to step on one another. And I would also like this to be index. All right, so I'm gonna press play and I'll control the level of the main vocal and then the reverb of the backups. Here we go. For you, more than you know, I see you through, more than you know, believe in you, more than you know. So are you seeing that interplay? I don't have to necessarily look at the screen. You can just reach for that controller and make your adjustments. One more time. For you, more than you know, I see you through, more than you know. So I like that blend. The backup vocals are pushed to the back because of this amazing reverb by Baby Audio. And now I can control the main vocal here to have it sit right in front. I've been asked about this so many times and I feel great to be able to give this to my community. If you're liking the video, go ahead and like the content. Go ahead and share it. I know a lot of people certainly do need it. Thank you for supporting me here on my journey. This is what I do. This is what I love. So I sincerely appreciate it. The next time you would like to map something and hard map it, so to speak, so that this only controls chroma verb, and perhaps this row only controls the compressor, and perhaps this row is only controlling the EQ use index. To learn more about Logic Pro, check out the work of Mr. Edgar Rothermich.